Steve Smith, the executive editor of PNN News and Ministry Network, who hails from Canada, and he has that beautiful, precise, uh, crazy Canadian accent. He's a boat everywhere. He's a boat everything. He's about mm -hmm. to speak mm -hmm. a boot. But go. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> it's good to have you with us, Mike. And listen, folks, I'm just going to tell you. Now, Mike, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Don't worry. But Mike is getting okay. ready to blow your mind because I know where Mike is going. He's going to talk to you about the National Prayer Breakfast and what's really behind it. He's been he's been delving into this. He's he's been glued to documentaries about it and digging. And so he's going to tell you what he is reporting, what he has found. All right, he's not making these claims. He's telling you the stuff he's found. And I think you'll find this fascinating. Mike, I'm going to let you talk now. Every now and then I'm probably going to have to jump in and say, "Wow." <laughs> but but anyway, right. you go ahead and you go ahead and unpack this. This is amazing, Mike. Yeah, there's a lot to cover here. It all started when my son told me, Dad, you've got to watch this documentary, this new documentary on Netflix called The Family. Uh, you're going to be blown away by this thing. So I start watching this, Carl. It's in five segments. Uh, it's a short documentary. It's not super long. But, um, yeah, it's about this group called The Fellowship. And as I was watching this documentary, I was watching it slack John. I could not believe what I was watching. And many people are having that same reaction to this documentary. Uh, and it's a group called The Family. Now, Wikipedia has a really good rundown on this group. It doesn't seem to be much bias of any on Wikipedia's part. They just lay out the facts as they are. So I have gone and harvested some of these facts. This group is called The Fellowship, also known as The Family. And the International Foundation, Carl, maybe, maybe or probably is the most influential, powerful group you have never heard of. <laughs> yeah. It's the yeah. U.S. based religious and political organization funded, founded in 1935 by a guy named Abraham Verady. The stated purpose of the fellowship is to provide a fellowship forum for decision makers to share in Bible studies, prayer meetings, worship experiences, and to experience spiritual affirmation and support. The fellowship has been described as one of the most politically well connected and most secretly funded ministries in the United States. They shun publicity, and its members share a vow of secrecy. The fellowship's leader, Douglas Coe, who's actually now recently passed away, and others have explained the organization's desire for secrecy by citing biblical admonitions against public displays of good works, insisting they would not be able to tackle diplomatically sensitive missions if they drew public attention. Throughout the documentary, Carl, they showed pictures of presidents and world leaders pointing out these guys, members of this fellowship, standing right behind the president. I mean, it's really a shocking documentary. People have time to watch that. They should, definitely should. The fellowship holds one regular public event each year, the National Prayer Breakfast, which is in Washington, D.C. Every sitting United States president since Eisenhower, Carl, has participated in at least one National Prayer Breakfast during his term. The group's known participants include ranking United States government officials. Now, these are members of the group, by the way corporate executives, heads of religious and humanitarian aid organizations, and ambassadors and high-ranking politicians from across the world. Many United States senators, Carl, and congressmen have publicly acknowledged working with the fellowship or are documented as having worked together to pass or influence legislation. Wow. It's unbelievable. Doug Burley wow. is a key figure in the organization and has taken over organizing the National Prayer So uh, Coe, Douglas Coe, or Doug Coe as they called him, he passed away a couple years ago. Uh, Doug Burley is now the key figure in organizing and is taking over uh, organizing the National Prayer Breakfast since the death of his father-in-law, Doug Coe. Prior to that, he had a leadership role in the organization and spoke at the Russian Prayer Breakfast. This is a global organization, by the way, more on that in a moment. And he wrote that rather than calling themselves Christians, and I like that because before the believers arrived at Antioch where they were first called Christians, kind of like a mm -hmm. derogatory thing, they, yeah, they that, were said right. to be in the way, right? In the way. I love that. Christians, they weren't Christians. They were just called, they were, they were just in the way. I love that, right? As they describe themselves, they are brought together by common love for the teachings of Jesus and that all approaches to loving Jesus are acceptable. Fellowship Foundation traces its roots to its founder, Abraham Brady, a Methodist clergyman and social innovator who organized a month of prayer meetings in 1934, basically just lighting a spark for this, this bomb that went off in, in, around the world. Then all started in San Francisco. Brady was a Norwegian immigrant who founded Goodwill Industries, Carl, in Seattle in 1916. Uh, Goodwill Industries. You have Goodwill Industries down there in Florida? I think you do. Oh, yeah, you? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, everybody down that here knows what it is. In, 
in 1916 to assist the city's unemployed Scandinavian immigration population. That's why it was founded. Goodwill uh-huh. Industries soon occupied a city block where they repaired and processed, uh, processed discarded clothing and furniture and converted waste, waste to wages. And that's something they still do heavily involved in to this day. Uh, the fellowship was founded in 1935 in opposition to President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. His work spread down the West Coast and eventually to Boston. So, Carl, this whole thing was spreading like a wildfire. Uh, and by 1942, they were, there were 60 prayer breakfast groups in major cities around the U.S. and Canada, including Chicago, L.A., Minneapolis, New York, Philadelphia, and San Francisco, Washington, and Vancouver. That same year, Verity began to hold small prayer breakfasts for members of the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. I mean, the Lord has given this guy a ministry, right? Now he's got a ministry where? To the highest movers and shakers around the country, in multiple countries now, even in 1946, he's in Canada already. Uh, and in 46, <clears throat> excuse me, he wrote a book and released a book with Reverend John G. McGee, chaplain to President Harry Truman, entitled Together. Uh, in the book, Rady explained his philosophy of visionary discipleship and gathering together in what he termed spiritual cells. They do have a quote from the book. I won't have time to get to that right now. But basically, he's, he's uh, forming spiritual cells out there, like small groups, really, with influence, Carl, that's going to shock you. Uh, in 1953, President Dwight Eisenhower attended the Senate prayer breakfast group. He was invited by fellow Kans and Frank Carlson. By that time, Verity's congressional members also included Senators Frank Carlson, Carl Munt, Everett Dirksen, and Strom Thurmond. This guy's got some big names now that are part of this family now, right? By 1957, ICL had established 125 groups in 100 cities with 16 groups in Washington, D.C. alone, Carl. It had set up another 125 groups in other countries. During 1958, a mentor from the Navigators, Douglas Coe, joined Verity as assistant executive director of ICL in Washington, D.C. After over 35 years of leading the Fellowship Foundation, Verity died in 1969, the year I was born, by the way, and succeeded by Richard Halverson as executive director. Halverson and Co. worked side by side until Halverson's death in 1995. So what is their influence exactly? Let's get into that now. Prominent evangelical Christians have described the Fellowship as one of the most, or the most, politically well-connected ministries in the world. Uh, Dr. Michael Lindsay, a former Rice University sociologist who studies the evangelical movement, uh, said there is no organization like the fellowship, especially among religious groups, in terms of its access or clout among the country's leadership. He also reported that lawmakers mentioned the fellowship more than any other organization when asked to name a ministry with the most influence in their faith. Lindsay interviewed 360 evangelical elites, among whom one in three mentioned Doug Coe or the Fellowship as an important influence. Lindsay reported that it has relationships with pretty much every world leader, Carl, good or bad, and there are not many organizations in the world that can claim that. In 1977, right. four years after he had converted to Christianity, Fellowship member and Watergate conspirator Chuck Colson, many of the audience members will remember Chuck Colson, uh, he described the group as a veritable underground of Christ's men all throughout the U.S. government. Wow. Former Kansas Governor Sam Brownback, also a former member of the Senate Prayer Group, has described fellowship members' method of operation. He says, typically one person grows desirous of pursuing an action, a piece of legislation or diplomatic strategy, and the others pull in behind. Brownback has often joined the fellows, the, the family members, in pursuing legislation. You see the influence they have here, Carl. For example, yeah, in amazing. 1999, he joined together with fellow family members, Senator Strom Thurmond and Don Nichols, to demand a criminal investigation of Americans United for the Separation of Church and State. And in 2005, Brownback joined the fellowship member, Senator Tom Colburn, to promote the House of Worship Act. The influence these guys have, Carl, even to this day, is shocking. Rob yeah. Shank, hey. for, founder of the Washington, D.C. ministry Faith and Action in the nation's capital, described family's influence as off the charts in comparison with other fundamentalist groups, specifically compared to Focus on the Family, Pat Robertson, Gary Bauer, Traditional Values Coalition, and Prison right. Fellowship. Uh, and the last two I just mentioned, Carl, are actually associated with the family. Uh, Traditional Values Coalition uses their C Street house, and Prison Fellowship was founded by Charles Colson. Right. And Shank also says that the, the mystique of the fellowship has helped it gain entree into almost impossible places in the capital. The fellowship's reach into governments around the world is almost impossible to overstate or even grasp. 
says David yeah. Cole, a former special assistant in George W. Bush's Office of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives. Let I me mean, ask you, Mike. Let me, Mike, 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 Mike. Let me just jump plan. in, Mike. I know we got a little delay. Let me jump in, and say a couple of things. Yeah. First of all, who wrote that article? We need to give them credit for it. Who wrote that article? That was written. Just it's just a Wikipedia page. I went over it. I wanted. I wanted to vet it. Make sure. Ah, that's right. Okay. A bunch of, yeah. And, uh, they did. I gotta admit, uh, Wikipedia has done a really well balanced job on this. It's not all yeah. flowers for them in here, but yeah. the reason for that is because of that documentary was based around a a writer who infiltrated the group uh, many years ago as a young man. Yeah. Went through the initiation of it all. And he wrote a book, and the, the Netflix documentary is based around his findings. Yeah. So uh, there, there is some negativity around this. Uh, if we have time after the break, I will get to that for sure. Yeah, let's do uh, let's, Yeah, I, Fair I, and balanced. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, right. this does, but, I mean, but this, I, I this whole thing, though, Mike, this whole thing <laughs> yeah. certainly does explain why there's so much demonic activity on the other side of this up there. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I hear the music, so we got to take a quick time out. So, folks, I told you this would be uh, mind-blowing to you if you've never heard any of this. And when we come back, I'm going to get Mike just to just to uh, ad lib and talk a little bit more about some of the uh, the negative press they've gotten on this, and they have gotten some. So it's not all flowers, like he said. It's not all flowers and roses, but this is important. Well, folks, you are listening to Freedom Friday, and we're broadcasting live this Friday afternoon from the ADX Communication Group studios in Pensacola, Florida, right here on the Gulf Coast. So we welcome you to the show. All right. So Mike Shoesmith, so get back into this thing about the family and the National Prayer Breakfast and tell us some of the stuff that's not so rosy, at least what people are reporting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But what are their beliefs in theology, actually? What do they actually believe theologically and so on? They actually have a mission statement regarding what they believe and all that on their 501c3 official form, right? Uh, the Fellowship Foundation or the family's official 501c3 mission statement is to develop and maintain an informal association of people banded together to go out as ambassadors of reconciliation, modeling the principles of Jesus based on loving God and loving others, to work with the leaders of many nations, and as their hearts are touched, the poor, the oppressed, the widows, and the youth of their country will be impacted in a positive manner. Youth groups will be developed under the thoughts of Jesus, including loving others, As you would be loved. Nothing wrong there, right? Newsweek reported that the fellowship has often been criticized by conservative and fundamentalist Christian groups for being too inclusive and not putting enough emphasis on doctrine or church attendance. Carl, NPR has reported that the evangelical group's views on religion and politics are so singular that some of... Some other Christian right organizations consider them heretical. Uh, David Quo, staffer in President George W. Bush's Office of Faith Basic Community Initiatives, who has been affiliated with the fellowship since college, said of the fellowship, for all the hysteria about Christian organizations, the irony that the fellowship is being targeted as a bad egg is jaw-dropping. This is so not focused on the family. This is so not Christian coalition. There are other Christian groups that are truly insane who purport to follow Jesus Christ and who I would submit do not. The fellowship is a loosely banded group of people who have an affinity for Jesus. Current fellowship prayer group member and former U.S. Representative Tony P. Hall said, if people in this country knew how many Democrats and Republicans pray together and actually like each other behind closed doors, they would be amazed. The fellowship is simply men and women who are trying to get right with God, trying to follow God, learn how to love him, and learn how to love each other, unquote. When he lost his teenage son to leukemia, Hall says, this family helped me. This family was there for me. That's what they do. Hillary Clinton weighed in on this. She described the meeting, uh, meeting the leader of the fellowship in 1993. She says, quote, Doug Coe, the longtime National Prayer Breakfast co- organizer, is a unique presence in Washington, a genuinely loving spiritual mentor to guide anyone, regardless of party or faith, who wants to deepen his or her relationship to God. Okay, now stop, 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 stop. Okay, yeah, but stop. So (laughs) if Hillary Clinton endorses it, I'm out. Okay, I'm out. So yeah, I'm out. I'm going to bow out. I bow out. Um, So (laughs) So let's talk about something else now. No, I'm kidding. You go on. But I'm just, that's, knowing what we know about that woman. That sounds so hypocritical. Now, I don't want to be too judgmental. I know some people are listening saying, how dare you judge her? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not judging her. 
against me. I'm judging Hillary Clinton against the word of God. And we have an awful right. lot that she has done and said. Jesus said, look at people, false prophets, people are going to bring you false messages. Judge them by their fruit. We are supposed to judge. So I just want to get that straight for all the Pharisees out there who are judging me right now. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Well, and uh, Hillary Clinton described meeting the leader of the fellowship in 93. So that was a long time ago, and perhaps many uh, multiplied demonic possessions of Hillary since then. I mean, she yes. may have been sort of, sort of interested in, in the things of God in 93 and has now since fallen off the wagon so hard she hit yeah. every ugly stick on the way down. <laughs> uh, but they've, hit, they've taken a hit on their leadership model, though, Carl. This is going to be shocking to you. Uh, okay. This is where things get a little dicey for me, okay? Okay, uh, right. in one video, In one videotape lecture series in 1989, Doug Coe said, Hitler, Goebbels, and Himmler were three men. Think of the immense power these three men had, but they bound themselves together in an agreement. Jesus said, you have put, you have put me before other people, and you have put me before yourself. Hitler, that was the demand to be in the Nazi party. You have to put the Nazi party and its objectives ahead of your own life and ahead of other people. In the same series, Cole also compared Jesus' teachings to the Red Guard uh, during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. He said, quote, I've seen pictures of young men in the Red Guard of China. They would bring in this young man's mother and father, lay her on the table with a basket on the end, and he would take an axe and cut her head off. They have put, yeah. uh, they have put the purpose of the Red Guard ahead of the mother, father, brother, sister, even their own life. This was a covenant, a pledge. That's what Jesus said. All right, so now let people, me break, let I mean, me, ho, 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 we got a, we got a delay there. Let me break in. Let me yeah, put a little okay. biblical, I'm going to put a little biblical context to this. Now, I don't know these men. I don't know this family. I only know what you have right. educated me on and what I have educated myself on. And now a lot of our audience, by the way, we just got a text from Tampa, Florida. Um, oh gosh, it just slipped off the screen here, but let's see if I can find it. It's from Tampa. And oh yeah, here it is it's from Susan from Tampa Bay it said, just became aware of this very thing as well concerning national prayer breakfast and as as a pay to play she said very very eye opening susan from tampa so susan thank you first of all for listening to freedom friday live and thank you for texting us okay so mike but here's the biblical you remember jesus himself told us to be wise as serpents but harmless as dove now if you'll if you'll look up in most of the commentaries they will say something similar to what that guy just said that is if these evil people know how to form themselves right. in groups and power groups and know how to influence hearts right. and to win souls to their evil cause, how much more should we not be influencing people and winning hearts and minds for the cause Jesus Christ. Now, that's the way I hear that guy saying it. But, of course, I know right. that the, the media, the leftist media, is going to report it by invoking the name of Hitler over and over. Like, look, 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 he's a white nationalist. He's a yeah. racist. Yeah. He's a Hitlerite. By the way, Hitler party was a socialist party. As leftist as you can get, the Democrats ought to feel very comfortable with all of that. Anyway, that's my, that's my uh, context. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and the and just to just to clarify on that racist point, we don't have time to get into much of the other stuff I have here. But the family or the or or the, you know this group that goes by a few names, but they are rabidly anti-racist, rabidly any any kind of so. racism at all, and you were shunned out of that group. Period. Full stop. Uh, David Cole, a former White House aide to George Bush, said that Cole is using Hitler as a metaphor for commitment. The NBC report said a close friend of Cole told NBC News that he invokes Hitler to show the power of small groups for good and bad. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So my, so my context was correct.
didn't know. Thanks. Not only things that he didn't know, there are things he still doesn't know. Sharon has died aged eight. Asian. We are with one of Rabbi Kaduri's disciples.